If it satisfies you, Lord, it satisfies me. Amen. And when I battle in cancer sometimes, when it's hard, I have to say that's okay for the pain, Lord. If it satisfies you, it satisfies me. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's because God sustained me that I'm here tonight. Amen. I want you to know that. Amen. She wants to sing a song I wrote. Yes, America needs to get back on that old path. Right here is America. You're a real American. Those are a bunch of imposters that are not praising Jesus Christ. They're not Americans. A bunch of haters that shouldn't even be known in leadership. If I ever talk to them, I'll tell them. If you don't love Jesus, hallelujah, you sure don't love me. But America needs to get back on the old path. We've got a great country to be strong. I believe if Jesus ever had time to look down, Brother Mike, and say, Hold it a minute. I don't want to destroy America. Look at these people that the Rudy Branch Church Amen. tonight. I think this is the time. Hallelujah. Yes. Play that. that I can't hardly hold my guitar or band to rip. They want me to bring my band, but I'm sorry. I didn't bring it.
I got through singing and one night, and this little boy, about nine or ten years old, came backstage and brought me 50 cents. I said, that, oh, I don't need your money, son. Keep that. He said, no, sir, you need that. I said, no, I don't need your money. He said, my daddy said you're the poorest singer he ever heard. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I wrote this song several years ago, an inspiration for Jordan and, and Wayne Spencer. I was, uh, I was uh, going by a little church I used to go to as a young man, young boy, and uh, about seven big in the parking lot. When I was growing up, that place would be packed out. And I got to thinking, who was it changed? God had not changed. The preacher still preaching the same word of God. And I heard an old preacher on the radio a few days before that, and he was letting us have it. He said, there's a heaven to gain, and there's a hell to shun. So I was mowing the yard, and I quit mowing. My wife said that was all I was doing, getting out of mowing the yard. But I believe the Lord gave me this song. The old preacher man stood there in the pulpit. The church house was empty almost. His eyes filled with tears, his mind filled with memories of days not so long ago. When the church house was full, not one pew was empty, and the altar, it was stained with saints' tears. As he stands there this morning, and he sounds out the morning once again to let them know there's a heaven to gain and a hill to shun. Anybody believe that? He 
stands there in that city, the city he preached of so long. Anybody here ever been there? Yeah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Sister Irene, I didn't know you'd been there. Sister Irene, I used to radio work for Irene. I worked for her. I had a Had a wonderful time. You're a wonderful lady, and I thank God I got to know you in this life. And we've got some ladies coming up here that mean the world to me. I get to watch them on TV all the time. And you talk about some ladies that love the Lord. Now, we've got some right here. How many have seen Diane and Mildred on television? Let me see. Whole house full of you. Hallelujah. And they're just, and Sister Brenda, they're just as real in person as they are on television or anywhere else. Y'all want to sing down there? I guess. You want to come down here with us? <laughs> I can't get down without lowering you. Know. <laughs> 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 it's not coming down. Lower it comes down. You got me in the bind. I didn't have to have her. Get around this one. Hallelujah. What are you going to sing, honey? Right, right before they sing, can we do this? Uh, we're going to receive an offer, and this will go to Brother Mike. And uh, hey, we need somebody singing to take up an offer. That might make y'all give a little bit. Yeah. So uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna get a couple of ushers up here. If we can get a couple of ushers up here, Brother Cody and maybe Brother Glenn. Glenn, could you come and uh, and uh, we're gonna receive this offering. This will be going to our evangelist, Brother Mike Sage. Hey, open up your horns, open up your pocketbooks real wide, and let's be a blessing to the man of God. And uh, we'll ask Brother Glenn if you would to uh, ask the blessing over the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, God, Lord, as we bow in our heart, Lord, we thank you for all we've already felt tonight in service. Pray, Lord, you just anoint us again, God. Bless each one, Lord. Bless this offering. Bless the use for the ministry, God. We pray. We'll thank and praise you, God, for all you do. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to do something for Brother Mike's sake. Hallelujah. Yeah. Whatever you can, I want you to give tonight. Amen. God has not failed to make, fix your cup equal measure, you know. He does that, don't he? Amen. Good music, Christy. I'm shaking together and running over. I was at Brenda's church one night. She was a pastor in a beautiful church, and I was, I was, I don't know what to sing them, but I was up. But they, they had the offering, and I had a $20 bill. The Holy Ghost said, give that money right there. You got a $20 bill. I said, but that. I got to have cash money tomorrow. What am I supposed to do? He said, you just give that $20 bill. Brenda was there. Yes, sir. And I did. I put the $20 bill in there like I was told to. And when I was leaving, I don't know who it was, Brenda. You might remember, but a man stood up on the end and handed me a $20 bill. Put back my bill. Bro. You don't think God won't tell you to make your God loves a cheerful giver. And I, I love Mike said he come a long way. If I tell you, if he didn't want to get the dime, he'd be here because it's the way he is. Amen. Uh, this man types of one of the most beautiful churches in the world, and yet he has worked his life. He's worked. He didn't just sit back and say, pay me, and that's all I'm going to do. It could have been all, but I know Mike worked. I, I was down with my little boy was little in it. Uh, was the hundred mother's part? Here was Mike with a whole bunch of older youngins there. Maybe you took Mike young, and I can't remember good, Mike, but I remember you being there. But he was working, I remember that, as pastor in that beautiful church. And right now, it's a church that I know God is awful proud of, because I am, too. Would y'all fix the same? Because this man's got to preach. And... I know <laughs> Right, this here is Diane. Y'all know Diane? This lady gave up a whole lot to be with us right here with God's people in Bristol. Coming out of New York City to this little beautiful place where we live. And she has blessed so many. I don't know how many of you have blessed her. Many, it's all right. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. I hear, uh, I hear him sing on the radio a whole lot. And this sister Mildred, she's an angel sent straight from him. Amen. Her husband was a wonderful pastor and uh, she didn't quit working because God called him home. No, he, he told me to keep singing. Yeah, Amen. And she had. Amen. But, praise God. And this lady, what can I say? The devil fought against her, Mike. That's the word go. I seen them heathen myself a fight against her. There was demons. Amen. And we're still here, honey. Amen. Y'all fixing the same we want to do. Well, you got us up here. So. I want you to. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't nobody can now sing these younger rights. I might sing bass or something, right? <laughs> Praise God. Well, we're going to sing this song. Uh, 
have sticks and stones might break my bones, but words cannot harm me. You can say this and you can say that, but Jesus is still on the throne and he's coming back. All right, uh, I'm going to give our evangelist another introduction tonight. You never know, you might hire him. Amen. So I want to introduce to you, reintroduce to you, all the way from Smith County, Atkins, Virginia, United States of America, planet Earth, Brother Mike. Yes. A lot of old men of yours and preachers. Man. 
God, how they might not have had a big crowd down here, but boy, they're up there with 10,000 times 10,000 yeah. and thousands and thousands lifting their voice singing praises yeah. unto you, the Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord. So we've got us a home to come to. We're in this world, but we're not of it. So, oh God, we build to need this side of eternity behind this sacred desk. We we'll ask you, oh God, would you speak to our hearts now by your word and by your spirit? About your dear family. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise be unto God. My mother, my brothers, my sisters, my family are those who hear the word of God and do it. Ain't you glad we've got somewhere to go? Yes. Yeah. I know we've had a lot to say, but some of you want me to say it, so I'm going to do just a little dab of one. And I'm going to do it like old granddaddy and grandma and them on yonder co rent back to church in the hills of Grayson County. Used to sing it years ago. And this is my granddaddy's favorite song. And I'm telling you, it is a confident song. It goes along with 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Behold, uh, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. Amen. Amen. We're the family of God if we're saved. <laughs> Yeah. If you've been born again, washed in the blood, sealed yeah. the Spirit, would you wave your hand to the glory of God? Praise the Lord. I'm glad I'm glory yeah. Amen. 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 Sometimes I ain't too proud of these old down sages on this earth, but I'm sure glad I'm proud of my heavenly family. Amen. And my, and my heavenly brothers and sisters. Yeah. We're all not perfect. We're only one perfect. That's the Lord Jesus. Right. But we know His love. And it is amazing. What yeah, man man. the Father hath been so upon that? That we should be called. Now the King James said sons, but what that means is the children of God. Amen. Back in 1611, they always use those masculine. Don't let it bother you. You little sisters ain't left out. You, he's got daughters too. Right. I got brothers and I got sisters that are saved by the grace of God. And if yeah. you're not saved, I've got good news for you. You don't have to wait till some old fish will or call. You can come on down this aisle. Amen. Yeah, right. yeah. He yeah. wasn't ashamed of you when he bore your sin to Calvary. He was not ashamed of you whatsoever. And don't let us not be ashamed of him. For if we're ashamed of him down here, he's forced to be ashamed of us up there. Matthew 10, 28 is plain about that. He said, but if you'll profess me on earth in front of people, then I'll profess you here in heaven before my father. Amen. Amen. Also said there would be rejoicing in the presence of the angels over one sinner that would be. Amen. Wouldn't that be wonderful? But if we as God's family, the family of faith, would just get in the position like when God was sending us that message last night, and I agree with you, Pastor, what an outpouring of obedience as we gathered around this altar last night, humbly saying, God, we've dropped the ball, we've fumbled the ball, Amen. we haven't been what we should have been, we haven't been as faithful, haven't been what, doing what we ought to have been doing back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and the early 2000s. If we had been, we wouldn't be in the best we're in tonight right. in this country. Yes. So right. if we will repent, agree with God, yes. then we'll get a hold of that gold Amen. pride in the fire, white raiment that's a shame of the Adamic neck and this wouldn't appear, and that gold pride in the fire would be rich, we would be robed, and then the I salve, we would be responsible, have a little responsibility. Because one of these days I'm going to be accountable, so I better be responsible now. Yeah. And if every day I take my responsibility seriously, then one of these days the accountability yonder today of judgment won't be so bad. Right. Then I know I'm going to answer to the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ for every deed that I've done in the body. And I'll answer for everything wrong that I've not gotten forgiven and placed under the blood. Right. Then if I'm going to be accountable in that day, I need to be responsible today Amen. in order to be accountable in that day. Yes, right. And perfect love cast out fear. First John, we can have confidence and not be ashamed before Him that He's coming. We don't have to be ashamed. It won't be a day. I tell you, if you buddy with Him and you're friends with Him and you obey Him and you walk with Him and you're friends with Him, perfect love casts out fear. He won't be, you know, it's not going to be a day. He loves you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know Him. Yeah. <laughs> One of these days we're going to see Him. Amen. So if I know I'm going to be accountable in that day, I need to be responsible today right. in order to, and have that day in mind. Yes. And then if I take that responsibility seriously and that accountability seriously, then my credibility before a lost and denied world, we just want to be humble before God and people. Yes. There's no pretense in going on here tonight. We've got some mighty good singers in here. And you could have probably went down the road trying to be some star. But they ain't the one star in this oh, sky. Right. Hey, that's the one star. Yeah. 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 Go yeah. ahead, yeah. God, we need to sing it for us. Yeah. We're singing for Him. Yeah. You think of all the people.
Oh, Lord. Uh, Brother Amen. Eddie, that your songs that God's given you, they're God's songs he gave them to you. Yeah. And how God's blessed so many people uh, through those songs. Brother Carter, you've preached to so many, many, many people down through the years. It's an honor to be with you tonight, brother. And God bless all these. I can brag on all of them, can't it, Brother Jim? Because I know who's in them. I know who's right. in you. Hey, glory to God. Jesus in you, Jesus in me. That makes us brothers. Amen. Amen. Glory be unto His name. So we can be called the children of God. Therefore, the world doesn't know us because it didn't know Him. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him. For we shall see Him as He is. Glory be God, girl. You're going to. Brother Bob, just keep on. Amen. He told me months ago, he said, well, I got cancer, and the doctor said he couldn't do nothing. He said, I told the doctor, well, thank God that Jesus will just take over. Amen. 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 That first July, he said, I'll see you in October. Amen. 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 That's faith. Yeah. Yes. It's what you believe. We believe God. Yeah. Last chapter of the book of Acts, Paul was out there in that horrendous storm on the Mediterranean Sea. What, you know, an old captain, all of them, all those lost people, oh, we're going to die all this old. And Jesus, old Paul said, the angel of the Lord stood by me last night. Yeah. Ain't going to be a single loss of life because, sirs, I believe God. Amen. Yeah. Just believe God. Yeah. Well, Sister Miller, thank you for pointing out the fact there's people in Mexico Beach, Florida, there's people in Panama Beach. Our little boy that plays music for us up our freedom, he worried death. His mommy and daddy lost their home. His grandparents lost their home. I guess it's just devastation down there. Everything flattened, that awful. And it's, we prayed for them. Yeah. But thank God the church here, Ruby Branch, is still, it's fine tonight. Yeah. But you know what? Even if a tornado had come down through here and there wouldn't be nothing but toothpicks left, we're still the church of the Lord. Amen. 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 We're still Amen. the royal priest of the Holy Spirit. A holy nation, a chosen priest. Called out General Assembly the firstborn, and Jesus said, Upon this rock in Matthew 16, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall Amen. not prevail. Amen. Amen. Our brother back there was with us in the funeral today, and Psalms 102 says, The children that shall be born shall be praising the Lord. Amen. The church ain't going down, we're going up. Amen. Amen. <laughs> We're still the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Yes, we are. A city set on the hill can't be hid. And Jesus said, I didn't light you up and put you in the church or the golden candelabra uh, to put a big bushel basket on you. I want you to put up, put yourself up here in the church and let the world see the light. Because he is the light of life, John. And now he and us, then we're the light of the world. And the reason why all this stuff's going out around in the world is the light's dim in the house of God. Amen. Right. Bless you, we Eli. Bless his heart. He let half nine finish get by with everything. Right. Spoiling them. Wouldn't do anything about it. Just let them go on in their wickedness. And the light grew dim in the house of God. Amen. But see, God's still God. Yeah. Amen. God doing pretty good before I was ever born. God still be God after I die. Amen. We're the workmen, and I'm glad to join you workmen, and we're working. Yeah. Our yeah. own salvation we can do with fear and trembling, but one of these days, this workman that you're looking at, I'm, my, this old body's going to be in the grave. Yes. But to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Yes. So one of these days, this workman, that workman, that workman, that workman, that workman, we're going to all be gone, but the work's going to still be going yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you ever believe the lie of the devil that the church is in dire trouble. Some of these progressive left-wing wackos, they say that they're going to kill the church. <laughs> you believe that? I remember when I was a child, I paid preacher's wife, Joyce Pence, bless her dear heart, she's in heaven now. But she'd get up, and she got up in 1968, sort of scared a lot of people, because Gus Hall, who remembers Gus Hall? I just happen to remember because she sort of tore me up a little bit. Gus Hall, you don't know who he is. Who cares who he is? But he didn't get saved. He's in hell. But he was the communist candidate for U.S. president in 1968. Mm -hmm. All this declared in 68. See, the same progressives that were young, aggressive college kids then, they old people now. Yeah. Yeah. 
And obviously, most of them ain't been saved. They still act. They still doing the works of their daddy, the devil. They still out here in colleges and all the rest of it. And like we preached last night, when we've been so inattentive, uh, fussing at one another and doing our little thing that we've been doing in God's house, you got to hand it to the devil's children, brother. They've been at it. Right. They've been doing it, and they've had their agenda, and they've been doing it right under our sleeping noses. Yeah. So we can't, you know, fault them in any way. That same crowd was back there in 68, and old Gus Hall was his name. Little Joyce got up in the pulpit, and she started crying. She said, oh, I hope I can take martyrdom and suffer for Jesus. Because it's coming. And I, 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 you know, I was, how old was I? Fifth, uh, I don't know, born in 53, so it had been I'm like a 15-year-old boy. And uh, listen to that, and I said, what's she talking about? And she said, well, you know what that old Gus Hall said? He just can't wait for the day that's soon approaching when the last congressman in the U U.S. House of Representatives strangled to death on the guts of the last preacher. And those old Christians like saying about the blood so much, let's just slit the throats of the babies, drag them across. That traumatized a 15-year-old boy. I'm sitting there saying, what? <laughs> and they think people want to close down the church and turn you, the United States into communism because they hate capitalism and they hate Christianity and all of that stuff. Well, looky here. It's 2018. Yeah. Where's Gus Hall? I don't know. Where's the Communist Party of the United States? I don't know. Where's all that look? I don't know. But I know where the church of the Lord Jesus is. Yeah. Yeah. division and all this stuff that's going on out here. But we're passing through, but we're going somewhere. Amen. Years of time are swiftly passing. <laughs> now does that make you sad that you're up in your years? You ought to be happy. Yeah. Right. I, I buried so many young folk you've never seen 20, 30, or 40. I'm glad to be 65. I've made it this far. But I'm ready to ship out any time. Praise God, I don't need to worry about a lottery. I don't need to be worried about any kind of money. Because when my ship comes in, I'm going to ride her right out. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Jesus is going to say, Rise up, my little brother, and come away. Yeah. He whose hand is on the wheel, brother, he yeah. guarantees you safe passage to the other side. Yeah. I don't know what kind of turbulent waters we may have to go through, but we're going to get through, I promise you. Yeah. Amen. So years of time are swiftly passed. Should make you sad. Because <laughs> they're bringing near heaven's goal. Soon yeah. I'll be at home <laughs> with Jesus. Amen. Verse uh, 22. 
here in Luke 8. The next verse where we left off the reading. Bless his name. We've done seen the Lord. We met the Lord. We've accepted the Lord. And even as a family of faith, though, sometimes we're going to be challenged with storms. Right. We can go on through this chapter, but we'll just pick out one story here. And there are several stories here and incidences that you can read on down to later when you get home before you go to bed. We won't go through all of them. I know there was a physical storm that brought the Florida Panhandle and came on up through Georgia and the Carolinas, but there's a lot more storms in life other than the physical ones. But Jesus said in verse 22, let's go over to the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. And there they went. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. Sometimes Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, just because you don't feel his powerful presence, that doesn't mean he's not here. Right. Sometimes the circumstances and situations can so manipulate our feelings that we wonder, where is he? Sometimes situations in life can so distract that our attention gets pulled away from our Lord to what's going on. We get distracted and we forget who he is because of what we're involved in. Now, don't try to get so spiritual on me now. You're sitting there and say, well, I don't know what he's talking about because I've never got bothered in my life. No. I'm going to tell you, storms will come and everything. Yes, sir. Yeah. You don't think people will lie on you. You don't think people will falsely accuse you. If you don't think troubles and trials can come your way, you better be getting checked up. Amen. Come on, bro. Proverbs 27, 1, boast not yourself of tomorrow. You don't know what a day may bring for you. Be very careful by criticizing others because the very thing they're facing now, we may face ourselves before the years out. Right. Be very careful about criticism and judging and all the rest of it. We like to judge people. We like to talk about people. You've heard me say this a lot in the last 12 months. If you, if you come around to where we are, Jesus said in Matthew 7, don't judge people. And yet we judge everybody. Yet Jesus said love everybody and we don't love nobody but ourselves and those in our particular group. Now the family of God has been fragmented not because of a lot of situations and circumstances out here in the world. I can expect the world not to love us. Jesus said you're not going to be popular. That's right. That's right. But it still behooves me to try to figure out why those who say they're saved wants to set it not their brothers. He said, why do you worry about the moat in your brother's eye and you don't pay any attention to the beam in your own? Right. That word moat in the Greek, in the Greek, the best I can explain it to us old Upper East Tennessee and Southwest Virginia hillbillies, if you know what a red oak tree is, a red oak will hold its leaves all the way through the fall and then through the winter and all the way in the next summer. Right, yeah. And if you've ever fooled with an old red, a red oak leaf, they're, they're just crumbling to nothing. And that's basically what Jesus said that, that the moat is. It's just a little leaf, it's just an insignificant anything that's really not, not, not nothing. You take that little dried leaf and it just work, you just mash it in your fingers, it'll just go to nothing. But the beam, that's the trunk of the tree. Right, yeah. So Jesus said, You're worrying about all these other little things in other people's lives that really doesn't affect you at all. And you don't see the beam that's in your own eye. Right. Cast out worry about the beam in your own eye. Don't worry about the moat in your brother's eye. Yeah. And so if we would all get humble before the Lord. Yeah. Right here sits the preacher that I shared with you last night. If I wake up tomorrow and all that I have tomorrow is what I have given to God today. And what I have thanked God for today. Amen. I added a little something to it last night. Uh, all I'll have tomorrow is the ones that, I, the ones that I've told about Jesus. Today. Amen. If I wake up in the morning and all I have 
is what I've given to him yesterday. Amen. <laughs> what would I have? Yeah. That's the measure of your treasure. Amen. Right. Not what you amass in this world, because all that's going to be fading away. And all the things that I can do to elbow for political seats in the sanctuary or elevate myself, all that stuff's going to be burned up. Wood, hay, and stubble. But the gold, silver, and precious stone that comes through the fires of the judgment seat of Christ will receive a reward. Jesus told Peter when old Peter said, Lord, I've sacrificed everything to you. Jesus said, well, let me take something, big boy. <laughs> Ain't nobody ever given nothing up for me in this life nor the life to come that I'm not going to reward handsomely. Right. right. So don't you worry about what you're losing. Because with the same measure that Brother Bob was talking about that $20 bill, he gave the $20 bill to Jesus, and before he got out of God's house, he'd already put the 20 back in the bill. <laughs> you just can't out give God. Right. I mean, that's the family of God. Sure, we're going to have storms. And they got out there sometimes, though, and they got distracted, and then they turned. Can you imagine this scenario right quick? Just imagine in your mind a little Galilean fishing vessel that was at tops 35 feet long and about 18 feet maximum wide. So it's much smaller than this sanctuary. And it had several men in it, and it was designed just to go out as a commercial fishing vessel on Galilee and catch fish. It wasn't engineered to withstand horrendous winds or, or waves. And so there they were, and they put out there in Capernaum, and they were going across the water. Little Sea of Galilee, about 26, 28 miles north to south, about 14, 18 miles wide. So it's a good-sized lake. Quite a bit bigger than South Holston over here. <laughs> but it certainly wasn't like the ocean. But still, in its geographical position, it's vulnerable to this day to storm. And horrendous storms. The air currents that come off the Mediterranean down the Megiddo Valley and the Vipay Pace Mount Tabor. If you've been a pilgrim, went to Israel, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And the Golan Heights up there to the left as you come across uh, the, 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 the plains of Jezreel and those wind currents, they say meteorologists today and fishermen today and even tour companies got to be careful. So you can have some tremendous storms like down on. So it may be a place of Jesus. It may be a place of Christianity. You might be serving God the best of your ability, but that doesn't immune you nor me from troubles and trials. Right. Right. Your pastor already quoted uh, uh, Job 14.1. Man that is born of a woman. Do you have a mother? <laughs> everybody does. Yeah. So everybody then has trouble. Right. Few days full of trouble. So storms are not a question mark. They're an exclamation point. That's right. Don't think your preacher's perfect. He's got problems just like you. Amen. All of these uh, servants of the Lord in here and you yourself, all of us are vulnerable to this old sin person. <laughs> There's things in this world that we'll never understand or figure out. No, brother. I don't claim to know all the questions, but I know who the answer is. Yes. Yes. His name is Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Hebrews 13, 7, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Back up in verse 5, he said, I'll never leave you. <laughs> and I'll never forsake you. Yeah. Let us go over to the other side. And when he saved you, birthed you into the family, Hebrews 2, he brought sons, brings sons and daughters in the family of God. Now he's your elder brother. He's not ashamed to be called a brother. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. 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 He's my bishop. Amen. Amen. My pastor, my God, my Savior, yeah. my Lord, right. my friend, Praise my God. elder brother, yeah. whose merit brought me into the very family of Almighty God. Amen. Now I call the Creator of all that is Father, not just Father, but by His precious Holy Spirit, Romans 8, I can cry, Abba, Father. He's my dad that loves me. Yeah. He's not ashamed of me, Hebrews chapter 11. <laughs> I'm glad I'm in this family. Amen. Do you God. know him? And if you know him, you love him. Yes. He said, let's go over. And they went over. But when that horrendous storm hit, he was back in the stern, had him a little uh, covered place back there in that little boat. He was sound asleep. He was 100% human. Got so tired, he slipped through a storm. Amen. So God that he knew their situation. But it's so indicative of this truth. We may not can see him with these eyes sometimes, but he's always here. Yeah, Amen. Right. Hebrews chapter 7 says, Seeing that he all ever liveth, 
to make intercession for us. Hebrews, uh, Ephesians 4, when he died, took our sin, he descended with our sin. He ascended with our salvation. Yeah. Yeah. And then he who descended into the lower parts with our sin, come back up and, and he descended with our sin, ascended all the way to the pinnacles of heaven yeah. with our justification and our salvation. Wow. He's our advocate. Amen. He's our propitiation. Uh -huh. If anybody sin, 1 John 2, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, who is a propitiation of our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Amen. What a God, what a Savior, what a friend. Amen. And we believe Him. His word can't be broken. Right. Hebrews 6, 18, it is impossible for God to lie. Amen. So there they were. But they got so distracted, so discombobulated, that they temporarily forgot about him. Yeah. Now let's be honest. We've had so much church trouble in America since World War II. Yeah. Come on. When God led us through the horrors of World War II, generation went out after that, built this great economy. But it was the 1950s that church folks started fussing. Mm -hmm. That's right. Started deteriorating. Come on, in the 60s, there was the vision. I remember well how many independent churches came out of the convention. Yeah. And I was mentored by a lot of preachers. They said, if you stay in that Southern Baptist convention, you just a golf ball in high wheels. <laughs> and then we got doctrinally divided. Yeah, we did, brother. Yes, we did. Used to, there was Rudy Branch and just a few churches around. Now, in this day's world, I know in Smith County, where I'm from, in, in 1970, there was something like 50 churches in our entire county. And the population was like 35,000. Now we've got about 27,000 people. But we went from 50 churches to 135. Oh, wow. Let me tell you something. If you leave the church, let me ask you this. Why did you leave it? I'm getting quiet now. Lord, you should go here. <laughs> Yeah. If your feelings weren't hurt, would you have left? Right. <laughs> if you hadn't got mad, would you have left? <laughs> sure, preacher, I got mad and got defeated, sure. So you left because you were angry. What you just told me wasn't God's will. No, that's right. not true, brother. Right. right. So you left and got in a mess. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's right. But you weren't strong enough to stand That's right. and work it out. <laughs> now, I ain't being mean. I'm trying to help. Right. Yeah. And we're in a mess in America because we got a mess in the church. All right. Amen. But God will help us clean it up. Forget that which is past. Yeah. And reach forth unto those things which are because God can be glorified in anything. Yes, right. I'm not against you start up churches because they're ideal for sinners that won't come to other churches to be saved. So that's a good thing. Amen. You just got to look on the good and trust God. That's but I would to the Lord tonight we would get beyond this storm Amen. that's killing us. Right. You ain't telling me that Peter didn't get mad at John. You ain't telling me that anger wasn't raising up out there. They were afraid. They were scared to death. They thought they were dying. They didn't know what to do. And you can just imagine the scenario. But it's time to be a man of God and a woman of God and suck it up and put on the whole armor of God and be strong. And don't let little, let any little wind blow you over. Because if there's anything out there can discombobulate you, that's telling me one thing. That is stronger than who you claim lives in your heart. Yeah. Because they can't nobody be against you if God's for it. Amen. You can stand there and have love that overcome hate. You don't have to be overcome of evil. You can overcome the evil with good. And if you're going to run anywhere, you run right to the arms of Jesus. Jesus in your prayer closet, yeah. and then you'll come out of that prayer closet, and you won't be a burden, and you want a battle, you don't want a battle, you want to be a blessing to everybody, even the yeah. rascal that drove you to the prayer closet. Because yeah. you're going to tell me if God's blind or God's deaf. People say, well, I didn't know why that happened. You think God don't know it happened? <laughs> Why don't you talk to God about it? You never talk to your long tongue and hypocrite. Won't lick your wounds and celebrate and say, oh, how I'm hurt. 
good. Get over it and get on to God. Yeah. Yes, amen. Don't you understand? He's a holy God. Yeah. He didn't author that long-tongued feller to hurt your feelings. He didn't cause all that, but he's God in the middle of that. Right. And he'll help you overcome that. Thank you, Lord. God might not have caused it, but God didn't stop it. Right. Amen, brother. How about that now? <laughs> Use your head, the woodpecker does. <laughs> we let the devil have easy victories. Because we don't have the mind of Christ operative. And we'd rather think about the bad things instead of the good things. Yeah. Like he tells us to do in Philippians 4. So God's not blind and God's not deaf and he knew. He knows what they said. He knows what they did. So then, well, preacher, it, well, why didn't if he didn't stop start it? He didn't cause it, and he didn't stop. Why didn't he stop it? <laughs> he tried to make a man out of you. <laughs> he don't want you to be a baby. Grow up. First Corinthians chapter three, Paul said, "I couldn't talk to you all in Corinth as as mature people, but as unto babes in Christ, you're so <laughs> immature and selfish, you can't figure this thing out." Right. God is in business to make you strong. Yes, he is. So he, like James 1, he won't tempt you with sin, but he'll test you. Amen. And the design and the objective of God's test in James 1 is to not destroy you and knock you down, but deliver you to a higher plane of living. Yes. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> He teach you a lot in storms. Yes. You learn a lot. Yes. <laughs> and you say now, are you troubled over that? They wronged you, right? Yeah, Lord. They wronged me. Well, what did I do for you at Calvary? That's right. See, it's all in the cross. Yeah. Right. You say, Lord, you died for my sin. Are yours the only sins I died for on that cross when I shed my blood? Well, no, Lord, I've got enough scriptural sins. I don't read my Bible like or two, but I do know you died for all sin. Be done. <laughs> <laughs> that sin that they've committed against you, I took that one in my own body too. Yeah. Yeah. And it hurt my feelings too. And ain't no sense in both of us being hurt. Don't you crucify me afresh. Don't you insult my grace. Because I'm stronger than that that came against you. That's right. 2,000 years ago, Amen. I felt the sting. Mm -hmm. And I took it where it belongs. Don't you celebrate the enemy. Right. You celebrate your victory over the Amen. enemy. Yes. That I won and gave it to Amen. Amen. Are you hearing that? Thank you, Lord. So I didn't cause that long tongue to hurt your feelings, but since it's happened now, let me teach you something. Don't stay in the kitchen, Mary. Get out here with Martha at the feet, because Martha chose the good part. Yeah. I'm feeding her my word. I'm feeling, filling her with my word, and she's going to be able to do things greater than the things that I've done. Now, you can rejoice when people speak evil about you. You can be happy. You don't need to be uh, out here whining and licking your roof. The, the, the last of the Beatitudes in Matthew 5, when people speak evil, and blessed are they, blessed are you, when people revile you, persecute you, and speak evil against you. Rejoice in me exceedingly glad. Don't be let that beat you down. Let that lift you up. And now you get out of that oh my soul. When you finally make your way back to the stern and you go in there and you show Jesus your heart and you say Jesus I'm out here dying and you don't care. <laughs> Matthew and Mark and Luke you have three stories of this. And Jesus said why were you afraid? Why'd you get all agitated? Where's your faith? It was two great questions by the teacher on that storm after he had walked out there on that bow, yeah. stretched those arms out there and said, peace, peace, peace. He's the prince of peace. Yeah. You got a storm in your heart and in your mind? Proverbs 23, 7, as we think in our hearts, so are we. That's right. That's right. How I think dictates the way I feel. How I think and feel dictates my state of being, whether I'm carnal or whether I'm spiritual. That's right. That's just the way it is. 
They finally understood after he put the storm to sleep. Because the great God rebuked the dilemma and he settled it. But then he turned right around and rebuked the disciples. Sternly, why were you afraid? I'm sure old Peter said, why am I afraid? <laughs> I went out here to 75 mile an hour wind, eight foot wave, and I'm about to draw a horse off this thing and drown. You asking me why I was afraid? <laughs> Where's your faith? Where's your right. Faith? Yeah. yeah. I told you when we left the permit that we were going over. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> now you let the devil tell you that you're going under. <laughs> Peter cussed you. Bartholomew questioned your knowledgeable seamanship. They hurt your feelings in a very tumultuous moment. But you, you will remember. You put your faith in yourselves. Amen. I scared you to death. Yeah, that's exactly right. Fear is torment. Yeah. But when they roused up perfect love. <laughs> yeah. And he put the stone on the stone. Right. Then he put his servants to sleep. When old Seba was a cussing David, throwing dirt at him, David said to uh, Abitar, <coughs> the general Joab's brother, and old Abitar said, I'll go over and cut his head off right now. He said, you put that sword in that sheath because if he's cussing me justly, God knows it, and I deserve it. But if he's cussing me unjustly, God knows that too. Right. Yeah. 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 If he's telling the truth, God ought to kill me. But if he's lying on me, for every curse that comes out of that man's mouth, God will give me blessings. Yeah. 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 That's the word of God. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes, it is. So let's us children get over ourselves. Good and know that we need to be glorifying our elder brother and our heavenly father through the power of the Holy Spirit. And let us believe that something will ignite right here in the branch. It'll spread to other churches. Let's get over ourselves. Can we be perfectly honest tonight? Without fear or favor of man. We've been, we've been too worried about short dresses, long hair, movies, all these worldly things, <coughs> or doctrine. One saved, always saved, fallen from grace. Why a world has been That's filled. Amen. Why a world is going to hell. Right. Brenda over here is a preacher. She said she's a preacher. You know, I, people say, Brother Mike, you believe in women preachers? My response is, I'd rather see them preaching prostitutes. Amen. 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 I know the sons of the daughters of, I'll pour out my spirit on your sons and daughters in the book of Acts. I know Esther saved the nation. I know Deborah delivered the people of God. I know that Paul had Phoebe in Romans 16. She was a deaconess in the church. Does that make some of you all turn against Brother Mike because Sister Ella Cagney that won me to the Lord in 1967 has been an official deaconess at Freedom Tabernacle Baptist Church? Well, then you know in Romans chapter 1, Phoebe, a servant of the church, that word is the same word as deacon. Amen. Don't tell me what you think. Tell me what God says. Amen. I would have time to come off the wall and urge all all this stuff. I may believe one thing, but if it doesn't affect my salvation and the salvation of others, I'm not going to fight over that. We got too much trouble going on. Hey, Sam Valley, Tobiah, and Geshem, Nehemiah said, I got better sense to come down and mess with the plan up with you on the plains of Ono. I'm doing a mighty work up here in the wall, on the wall. I'm not going to leave the work and come down there and hey. debate and talk about all these things. Right. Why should the work cease? 
you believe certain things? Yes. It, 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 and we said, walk, walk together, you got to agree. That's why we've got various denominations, various different local churches. You had them in Thyatira. You had them in Sardis. You had them in Ephesus. You had them in Laodicea. You had Corinth. You had Philippi. You had all these different local churches and then from different uh, regions and all the rest. They may not have agreed on every little minor doctrine. Crossed every T exactly right or dotted every I. But if they've been saved, Paul said, I've become all things to all people. That if by any means I can be something. Yes, amen. So I can have my personal ideas, but I don't want my personal ideas to make me angry at you or take away your opportunity from serving God. If you want to have a revival, let's get mature. Yeah. Let's get on the altar and let's all get stiff necked and stubborn and say, now nah, we're the highway. <laughs> <laughs> That's been holding us back. <laughs> Love everybody. Yeah. And encourage everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, was it in Mark 11, I think, where it's at for old John, or is it John 11? One? Where, where I wanted to give you the location, you can check it out. But that's when the famous story is when John went back to Jesus and said, Eat people out here doing miracles. If you're ordained, they ain't doing it like we do. That's <laughs> Don't worry, Jesus. We took that responsibility off of you. I told them to quit it right now. Cease and cease. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Jesus said, If they're not against me, John, I'm obviously bigger than you think. Right. I'm the storm calmer. I'm the savior. I'm the shepherd. You man. You're my people and you're my children, but you're not the boss of the church. Don't get you see over there, where is it in in the first Corinthians 8 where it says knowledge but the Yes. All of these doctrines from Calvinism that versus Arminianism. And we get people thinking, I know more than you. I'm smarter than you. I've been called ignorant and buffoon by a lot of preachers because I don't believe what they believe. But listen, I know who I have. Right. 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 His name is Jesus. Yes. Yes. And don't, listen, get you a little knowledge where nobody will look down on you, but you better get you a little bit more knowledge so you won't look down on nobody else. Right. 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 Because the ground so that looks. But I'm talking about the family of faith. Right. 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 Just because you believe Jesus and you've been truly saved, then we're brothers and sisters. Amen. 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 I may believe this about eschatology, prophecy, this, that, the other, my personal ideas about eternal life and all that. Man, the more I study this book, the more I you know I'm kind of growing and expanding. I love you, Sister Brady. We love you, Pastor. Tell about Jesus. Amen. And praise Amen. God. And win some. Thank you for being so And I know you've been through trouble. And I prayed for you. It looks to me like somebody brought you through. Jesus. <laughs> I ain't got a bad word to say about nobody. Either, other than the devil. Right. Praise God. We're supposed to love people. Try right. to hold people up. Yes. Try to build people up. Not just our brothers and sisters, but pray for our lost world. Amen. God will bring conviction. Wouldn't it be something if God's Holy Ghost power would get up there in Washington, D.C., yeah. settle down on that Senate like he yeah. never felt before. Yeah. I believe him. Don't you? Yeah. yeah. Did he say we we get what we ask for? Yeah. Right. Matthew 7, 7, I ask you, be, it'll be given. Yeah. Seek, you'll find. But what are you seeking? Your own, he, you, you, you ask and have not, James said, and then you, you ask and have not because you ask for this, that you'll heap it on your own lust. Our lust is killing us. His love will deliver us. Amen. Amen. We have an old time revival. <laughs> Can you imagine with me as we close tonight if all the churches would work together? Oh, yeah. Like they did there before the C.T. Townsend came. They all got together with that power. Amen. Now what's happening out there? Yeah, that's what I remember. Yeah. Sometimes we're like a big balloon. <laughs> Blows up, you know. We think, boy, in this one place, it ain't, it ain't no time. Some old stick in the mud. Well, I don't like to see you that. Why'd you go that old revival for? Where's all the converse? I've been hearing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Way the boom go. <laughs> but it don't have to be a flash in the pan. Oh, brother. It was wonderful to see all those preachers together. Yes. Yeah. Why can't we do that all the time? Yes. Yes. Amen. Why? Because we get our 
attention on a stone right. or on some struggle, and we forget all about it. who's with us. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Man, the life of it. You get back there with him and let him teach you, and you grow in grace. You will jump out of that prayer closet. Uh, shaking the hands of your enemy yes. and uh, telling uh, you uh, didn't do nothing that drove me to the bleeding feet of the Son of right. God and yeah. he told me that he loves you yeah. and I'm not going to fight Thank you, you. <laughs> I'm going to bless you yes. and the same measure comes back to you yes. pressed yes. down, shook yes. together yes. running over. Hey, are you hearing yes. God? Yes. Yes. So let's just get to the feet of our Heavenly Father and quiet and just curl up back there in that little old cock with Jesus. Don't get out there fussing one another struggling with this old inevitable storm of life. Run back there in that storm. Crawl up in there under that little old cover with him. Scooch up to his back. Lay your head over on his shoulder. Feel his heartbeat. Then he'll roll over and give you one of them holy kisses. And say, there ain't no sense of struggling out there on the back uh, with a struggle with this thing. Why don't me and you just sleep through it? Because I got her under control. Yeah. Hey, we're going to the other side. And hey, <laughs> Are you Praise feeling God Lord. in here tonight? <laughs> yes. Yes. Bless his name. Yes. Last night we did a little repenting. Tonight we just do a little rejoicing. Yes. He's, with us. He's done forgive us. He done washed us clean. I can't go back and relive 1990. I can't go back and try to stand against them taking prayer out. That water's already been poured, to, uh, poured out on the ground. Right. I ain't going to sit around crying, Lord, I can't get the water back in the bucket. I know where there's a crimson river flowing right. with precious right. blood. Yeah. And the rest of the water, I'm going to go get my bucket filled back up. Yeah. I'm going to do the best on the spirit the next time. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Now let's bow before our Lord tonight. Our Heavenly Father, yes. Lord, teach us your word, God. We don't have to be puny and whiny and babyfied and so selfish that we want it just like we want it. But God, we can forbear one another with love. Yes. That's what you tell us right there in Ephesians 4. Yes. My Lord, we can forbear one another. If I forbear my brother or sister, maybe I don't agree with everything. But they're my brother and my sister. They've been washed in the same blood, filled with the same spirit, going to the same heaven so I can love them. And love even covers a multitude of sin. So Lord, we look out with love for each other and love for a world that needs so desperately to hear about the real true Jesus. Not another Jesus like Paul warned them about and told them but the true and the living Christ, mm -hmm. the Son of the living God. Bless your ministers here tonight. Bless your people here tonight. Reach out with compassion to anybody that may be unsaved. Thank you, God, for these moments at your feet. You have fed us the bread from heaven. You've given us the water of your word. And God, I believe somebody learned something a little more. I know I did. I want you to teach me every day, Jesus. You said your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And that you would teach us, oh God. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, you say. And we can grow in the knowledge of you. So I pray, God, you will bless everyone here tonight. In the Amen. name of Christ. And whatever we want to do, if we want to humble ourselves around this altar. Maybe last night we did some repenting. Tonight maybe we just want to present our bodies a living sacrifice. Amen. And say, Lord, I want you to be just that, the Lord of my life. You gave me your mercy, and you want to give me your management. And I pray, oh God, that I'll let you manage my life and be the Lord of my life, and that I would truly follow you because you are the Lord who told us when you saved us, follow me. So I pray, oh God, that we will follow hard after you. Bless your children now. now I wonder, without any music, without any singing at all, have I got a brother or sister in the family of faith that would join us around the altar tonight and say, Lord, please. We've done repenting that we might have dropped the ball back yonder a few years ago. But Lord, now we want to tell you, here we are. We're like old Isaiah. We're showing up now. And we're saying, here am I, Lord, send me. You want to come to this altar tonight, raise your little hand to God and get down here and volunteer. 
for undebatable service to God. Say, Lord, you bought me with the price. I'm yours. Now I want to give you my mind. The renewing of our mind brings transformation of our lives. You brought in your soul a long time ago. How many will bring in your mind? Your mind around this all that. You say, Lord, here is my mind. I want you to make me spiritually minded. I want you to make me scripturally minded. I want you to make me strong minded. That would not the spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. A spiritual mind. Sound mind. Strong mind. Scripturally based, knowledgeable mind. Lord, we present our bodies living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable service. We don't want to be conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of our mind that we would absolutely know what your perfect will is acceptable and good will for our life is. So God, we draw near to you and you will draw near to us. Come on, dear brother. Come on, sister. You've been spoken to by God. You've been moved on by God. God has led you to come down to this old time altar tonight. Then come on, get on down here. Say, oh, here's my mind. Here's my body. Here's my heart. Here's my whole being. As a Christian, I want you to have me, God. I want you to be my manager. I want you to be my Lord. I want you to be my guide, my director, my defense, my rock, my shield, my high tower. Thank you, Lord. It don't mean we're going to be perfect. We'll still make mistakes. He's going to be right with you. I promise you that. Anybody in God's house tonight while God's people are praying around this altar? And you'd say, Brother Mike, I'm not a Christian. We talk about Jesus. They sung about Jesus. And I believe with all my head, all my mind, I know there is a God. And I've never really repented. I don't know for sure that I'm saved. I'm interested. I'm thinking about it. I'd like for you to pray for me. Would you let me pray for you right now? By the way, you can hand I'll pray for you immediately. Right now, you say, preacher, pray for me. I'm unsettled, unsure about my salvation. Pray for me. Would you lift your hands, please?